Okay, so hopefully you have done all of that. Um, you're going to want to navigate over to the Unity Learn uh, website uh, and log in. So once you log in, you can search for Bolt Platformer Tutorial, and it should bring you right here. You can copy that information right up there if you like. That's a long string of code. But um, anyway, so it's going to talk to you about setting up your level, updating your version of Unity, all the things that we've essentially done, how to install. Uh, again, I showed you because I was running into issues. Uh, you are going to load up level one. So uh, let's do that together real quick. We'll go ahead and continue the next step. We're going to go to Unity real quick, and I will show you how to lo load up level one i have level four loaded right there i believe so let's load up go ahead and save this just in case i didn't do anything um in, in your um assets folder so you go to assets you will see uh scenes so you're going to double click on scenes and you'll go to level one so start that up you now have level one uh if you followed the tutorial on how to get your layers in the right places your character should run uh, or the game should run so you'll notice a little flag is doing anything but when you press the buttons it doesn't do anything so what we're gonna do is we're going to follow this uh, tutorial to learn how to do that so this will handle moving left and right jumping playing the right animation so on and so forth so um, let's uh, let's get started what we're gonna do first is we're gonna create a flow machine. So for the player controller, we'll use a flow machine. And what it's doing is it's explaining how to add a flow machine. Um, we're going to select the player object. And when we select the player object, um, we are going to add a flow machine. So you'll select the player, scroll over here on the inspector window, scroll all the way down, hit add component, you'll type in uh, yours, yours will look like that as you start. You'll type in flow machine and you should be able to add a flow machine. So hopefully uh, you follow with me so far. Now what it's doing here is it's wanting to know whether the source is a macro or whether it's embedded. And if we go back to our screen here, if you remember, this is saying you're going to add the flow machine and on your machine you need to create a new macro for your player logic. And so uh, the way that I did this in the previous videos, it says you need to save it under, uh, if you look, it says you need to save it under macro. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our asset folder. We're gonna right click on, on, on this uh, panel over here where all our folders are. We're gonna hit create new folder and we're gonna call this macro or call it macros. So you'll open up the macros folder. This is where we're going to store those macros. So when we go back over here to our player, we're going to go back down to uh, flow machine. We're going to see, we have it set to macro, not embedded. You'll know the difference by the end of this. Um, and we're going to hit, or we're going to save a new macros. And I believe it said save it as player controller. Let me just double check that real quick just to make sure that was right. Yeah, so player controller is the way that you're going to name that. Um, so let's do that. Player controller, you're going to save that. And it uh, brings up this flow graph, which as we go back to our tutorial, you should be able to see that it uh, is going to look like this. So you should have that in your Unity file, that whenever you look at it, it looks like this, those match up, so we're good. Um, and you'll see a graph, it says you'll see a graph like this. So when we go here, that's what I see, so that's good. Okay, now that our machine is created, apply the changes to the player prefab by clicking override apply all. This is a prefab, it's blue. You'll notice something is a prefab because it's blue. What, this, what a prefab is, is whenever you have a file in your prefabs folder here, you'll see that, that uh, player is the same. Now, what, what we did is we started level one with player. Uh, which means if we make changes to this right up here in player, the player level in level one, it's not going to apply it across all the prefab unless you tell it to. So this is a prefabricated file, and when we pick this up and drop it somewhere, you'll see that you get the same thing, and it puts another thing in our hierarchy here. I'm going to delete that. What uh, we have, uh, we selected our player, and we put that uh, flow machine on that player object. 
So what it's saying is, is that you want to apply this to all of the player prefabs in every level. The way you do that is you scroll to the top of the inspector, you see player, tag player, layer player, um, and you're going to hit override and you're going to hit apply all. What that is doing is it's saying any changes I made to this player object in this level, I want it to be uh, universal across all the levels. So that's what it's explaining whenever it tells you to do that. Hit apply all, right? So we'll repeat this process often in the tutorial. Um, so it's saying we're going to just pick up from here. It's going to assume that you understood what I just said. That anytime you make a change to your player or any object in uh, an individual scene over here to apply it to the prefab and put it in other levels, you have to hit override. So that's just a little trick that you need to know how to do. So we're going to mark that as complete and move down to the first little bit of scripting. So we're going to calculate the movement. It says we want the character to move left and right depending on the horizontal input access. So basically what this is explaining, uh, I, let me see if I can explain this better. Let me see if I can get a, a little cursor to where I can draw. Is that on a 2D plane, you have an X and a Y axis. That's not straight by any means. But basically a timeline would be an example of an X axis. Um, so X is right here. This is the Y, right? So Y works like this. Now you should be familiar with this, but if you're not, you know, if you are, just bear with me. If you're not, hopefully this will help you. Okay, so this right here is zero. And by the way, this is 2D. If you had 3D, well then the Z would go not at a diagonal, but on a third plane. That's not the way it works. So you don't need the Z, right? Let me see if I can undo that. All right, awesome. All right, so this is zero right here. Oops, sorry. Right there is zero. This is one, two, three, four, and so on, so forth. Since this part right here is the middle is zero, this is negative one on the x, negative two on the x, and so on and so forth. Y goes this way. So let me erase that. So on the y, zero is here in the middle. And then it goes one, two, three, so on and so forth, positive that way. This is negative, negative one. So if this is zero, this is negative one, negative two, so on and so forth, that way. So if we wanted something to be on the x, y axis, uh, positive one on the x and positive one on the y, it would actually be right there. So let me get a different color here. It would be right there here right so one one if it was negative it would be over here negative 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 y on the x or negative one on the x negative one on the y uh, is right here that's negative one this is positive one so hopefully you understand that that's what this is explaining when you go left on the x-axis because we're doing horizontal not uh, vertical when you go left on the x-axis, you're moving in a negative number. That's what this is explaining right here. Uh, when you go right, it returns as positive. That's what that's explaining. So um, he says how fast you move will be controlled by the speed variable that we can tweak to adjust the gameplay. In other words, we're going to multiply the uh, x-axis by our speed, and it will tell you how fast you were supposed to move to the left or to the right. So this is what we're going to set up and figure out how exactly we're going to do. What this is telling you is that in your input manager in your settings, let me open that up real quick. Um, come on, there we go. Okay, so in your input manager in your settings, so settings, edit, pro, I think it's project settings, is that right? Yeah, your input manager. It will tell you uh, what does what. So left button is your negative, right button is your positive, your A, your D uh, on a, a controller. You know, they have that figured out on how to do that already and put it into uh, Unity. So that's what this is explaining, that uh, there is a way to determine that and even change it and just explain how to change it. So you know, let's get started because of the first time we created a variable. Um, we're going to show you, and what they're saying here is they're going to show you on how to do it with GIFs. So I'm going to show you in person. 
and you can follow along. So what it says is, is select the player game object. So um, and, and then we're going to switch to the object tab in the in the variable uh, window, and then we're going to add a thing called speed, and um, that we're going to set it up. So hopefully this is what you see. Let me just make sure my camera is right. Okay, so you see this over here. What this is saying is, is you're going to select the player game object, right? We're going to go down here to the variables. We're going to hit object. You can also, can you do it up here? No, you can't. Okay, so we're going to do our variables. We're going to click on that right there, and we're going to hit speed. Type in speed. Hit the little plus sign. What this is saying is that it is a float, which means uh, a float is a number um, that this is the way I have come to understand it. I've watched some tutorial videos. Basically, you have uh, a difference between integers and floats is that let's say you have the number one, two, three, four. This is the same number, right? It stays the same, but the number can change depending on where you put the, the, the decimal place. So it can float this way and it becomes a new number or float that way and it becomes a number but it stays the same. Now, that's the way I understand it. If I'm getting that wrong, maybe you can help me and, and to explain that a little better than I can. Uh, but it is a float, is what this tutorial says, and that you are going to give it the value of five. So this is a speed float. We're gonna give it the value of five. And uh, this also says, uh, as you kind of come back to the screen here, let me bring it back on over here for you. Um, so we've done that, and it's showing you exactly how to do that. Um, we need to get the horizontal input axis. We can do that with the get axis unit. So we're going to go back to our graph, and um, let me kind of bring this back over so that I can look at that while I'm doing it with you. All right. So we're going to go to our graph, and what it's saying is is that we can do that first. So let's just real quick. Take these two objects, select them, and delete those. You don't need those at the moment. We're going to right click. Uh, you can follow along with the, what they're doing here in, uh, in, in the Unity tutorial. So you can go code base, Unity system, input. So you gotta scroll down to input. Uh, where's input? Goodness gracious, input, capital I. Input, um, and then uh, get axis. So you can do it that way, I think, right? Get axis, axis name is what you're looking for. So you can do it that way and then type in horizontal, and then you're good to go. Or you can do it this way, and this is the way I prefer. It's saying um, get axis, just type it in, get axis, horizontal, and as soon as it's done doing that, yada, 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 yada. Input, get axis, axis name, and then you type in horizontal. So that's the same thing. You can figure out how to do that two different ways, and that's what it's explaining in um, the, the tutorial there. So um, all the way through figure 11, if you're following along with me there. So it also says you'll notice that the new type unit shows up. And when you click off of it, it's dimmed out. And the reason why is because it's not going anywhere yet. So um, basically it's saying if you have the fade out option turned on, which I do, that this is not doing anything. You need to make it do something. And so what we're going to do is we're going to drop the um, drag the the value output port out of the get axis, and then we're going to go into uh, a new component of the graph. So what we're going to do is we're going to go there, and we're going to choose multiply. Again, I'm not going to follow along here uh, anymore. I like typing it in. That's for me. That's helpful for me. So if you're like me, um, you can do it that way. Uh, I find that that is the most helpful for me. So go to, oop, not multiply point. We don't need that. We just need multiply, don't we? Uh, I went the wrong one. Not the top one, the bottom one. Multiply. Right, okay. In uh, math, right? So ma multiply. And then we're going to do get variable. And we're going to get an object variable. Let me explain what this is doing real quick. Like, if you don't, like, what, what the crap are we doing here? Get variable. If you remember, we typed in, in the player object right up here, we typed in a, an object variable, and we made it speed. So if you look here, if you click on that little drop down thing, it's saying, go to the object variable and get something, 
get speed. So you can type it in, speed, oops, or you can select it. Now there are gonna be times in this tutorial where you do type something in because it stores something every time you run it. But we're gonna tell it to get the speed variable on yourself. So where am I supposed to get the speed variable? Go to yourself, get your, your speed variable. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to multiply. So A is the X axis. So where are you on the horizontal axis? Which way did you go? Did you go left? Did you go right? Did you go positive or negative on the horizontal axis? Then you're gonna multiply that times your speed. So A is axis, B is speed, A times B equals, and here's the first one that we're going to, to tell it. So we're gonna set variable on our graph. What's the difference between graph and object? The graph here is in this graph. We're not gonna use this movement anywhere outside of this player controller. So we're gonna set it as graph and then we're gonna type in this variable movement. We won't refer to this anywhere else. That's just why we're able to do this here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna have it on update. So there were two big um, things when you enter in. There was a start and there was an update. If you ever done visual script or scripting, not visually, you see the start and the update method. What this is saying is, is that it wants you to check every single frame if somebody, whoever's running the controller, if the player has hit left or right on the horizontal axis. If it has, where is it at? So check, 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 check. Every frame it's checking. Has it, have they done it now? Have they done it now? Have they done it now? Yes, they've done it. Okay, so take that and multiply it times the speed and then we're gonna get our movement. So uh, basically that is what it's doing. It's taking the negative five or the positive five uh, and it's putting it into movement. So is it negative or positive that they went? It's negative, so multiply that times five, which is your speed and now we're gonna send it out into movement. Right now, this is not going to do anything. So um, it, it says basically, we didn't create that movement variable down here because we're only using this inside the graph. And uh, basically, there's no need to share it on the outside world. So what, what it's saying is there's no need to share it outside of this particular script. So let's stop the video right there and we'll get into the next one here in just a minute.